Welcome and thank you for standing by. This time, all participants are in listen-only mode. Today's webinar is being recorded. If you have any objections, you may disconnect at this time. Now I'd like to turn the call over to your presenter, David Craker. David. Hello, everybody. My name is David Craker. I live uh, near New York City. And today I will give in, be giving you a presentation on the geographies um, of Puerto Rico. And this is, you know, for any follow up uh, presentations you're going to see about Puerto Rico, it will help you understand a little bit about the background. I do not speak Spanish, so I will try to speak slowly today when I'm presenting. My colleague Yara McSweeney uh, does speak Spanish and she will be minding the chat so that if you have any questions, just put them in there. So, before we start with geography, I just thought I would uh, put this up here. It's a little uh, verb lesson for Spanish. And I like to say, don't take your verbs for granted. Uh, even though you probably, you all speak Spanish, people uh, stateside who are learning Spanish have to learn their verbs this way. So, we have to learn that there are AR verbs, IR verbs, and ER, ver ER verbs. And they all sort of fit into these categories. Sometimes um, they break the mold, meaning that they're um, irregular verbs and they're sort of half in one category and half in another. But we have to learn this background in order to uh, be able to speak Spanish a little bit better and a little bit clearer. And you probably know this by heart and maybe you don't even realize you know this, but you need this background in order to speak Spanish better and to know, you know, how to conjugate. So, like I say, don't take this for granted and let's move on and think about geography. Okay, so we don't want to take geography for granted. Okay, so we at the Census Bureau release our geographies in three different ways. Okay, we have what we call legal geography so we have nation state county place right and then we have legislative geography and so those are the geographies um, that are like congressional districts voting districts state legislative districts okay and then we also have statistical geography and those are geographies that the census bureau has created itself all right and so we create that to sort of fill in gaps to help people get uh, statistics and numbers uh, for areas that aren't legal geography or legislative geography. Okay, so I'll talk a little bit more about this as I go through uh, the slideshow. And then at the end, I'm actually going, going to go into our website, into two different places on our website and show you how to get some data and, and show you how to apply this to Puerto Rico. Um, okay, so this is what we call a, a hierarchy or a geographic hierarchy, and it's how the Census Bureau, uh, in, especially in the geography section, likes to um, divide up um, the, the nation and how we look at things. So we actually put the nation at the top, and we like to see the zip codes nest within a nation or the states nest within a nation or the county within the states and things like this. So we have all these different geographies here. Um, and so we are going to look at them as they apply to Puerto Rico. And let me see if I can get this to move on. Okay, so let's think about this. The legal geographies, these are things where people have actually um, gone out and surveyed and created lines, you know, that you could measure on, on the ground and figure out where counties start or cities start or whatever they are, they start, okay? Um, and, and so those are, they're very official geographies and that's how we can, you know, find information. But Puerto Rico um, has a sort of own set of geographies. And so of course you, we have the US and then you have Puerto Rico, which is what we consider to be a state equivalent. And then within Puerto Rico, you have municipio. And so if you were in the United States in general, we would say that that's a county, but in Puerto Rico, you call it a municipio. And then down here to the lower left, we would have called that a county subdivision, but it's you don't have that in Puerto Rico. So it's still municipio if you went looking for that geography. Okay. And then over here on the right, I think we had something else, an urban uh, growth area that's not applicable 
to Puerto Rico, so it, you don't have that. And whenever you see that I wrote NA, it means non-applicable or not applicable. But you also have uh, what we in the US call places. In Puerto Rico, you have communi uh, communities or, or zona urbana. You have those two things. So we would be looking for that, those, but it would be actually in our system called a place, all right? So these are the legal geographies. And let's go back to that hierarchy. So just to remind ourselves, this is what the hierarchy looked like again. And let me go further. And then let's think about the legislative geography. So once again, legislative geography is slightly different in the, in the fact that these are, you can vote for people um, for these areas. But also the other thing that's interesting about a legislative geography, these are geographies that are, that can fluctuate and can be moved around. They're not really, they're not really surveyed or, or um, you know, measured on the ground. They can easily be moved around and they're also dependent on population. So these geographies get moved around, including school districts sometimes because of increases or decreases in population. And so often what we do with the Census Bureau we wait till after a 10 year census and then these geographies get reallocated, they get changed around. And usually it's the state that will step in and do the division or the, the movement of these. So that's the difference with legislative geography from legal geography. This is dependent on after a census, okay? So we have congressional districts over here on the left, school districts, voting districts, and state legislative districts. But for Puerto Rico, um, I, I'm going to say that the congressional district, you have one con congressman at large, so this is not applicable. Um, and, and I think the you also have school districts and voting districts, and we don't supply the voting district information in our system. You probably do have your voting districts, but we don't supply it, in, so that's not applicable. And then also, um, I think you do have school districts, but we don't supply that information either. But over here on the right, we do have state legislative district information for Puerto Rico, and we do supply that to you. Okay, and I, I'm going to confess, I don't know what the name of that would be in Spanish for Puerto Rico, but um, when you look it up in the system, it would be called state legislative upper, upper district, it would be called upper house. Okay, let's go back to the hierarchy again, right? And so here it is once again, what we're, we're still looking at. And if I come to this point, these are what are called statistical geographies. Okay, and we have quite a lot of these. Um, these are where there's nothing really measured on the ground. Uh, it isn't something that you can vote for. These are things that are created by the Census Bureau them, ourselves so that we can give you numbers, okay? And so, if we look down the center here, you can get uh, information by tract or block group. And if you're dealing with data from a 10 year census, you can get it all the way down to a block. But that's only for the, for the 10 year census. If you're looking for data from what we call American Community Survey, which is an extension of that, but it's data that we collect all the time and release every year. Um, and that's what I, I will primarily uh, show you today, American Community Survey, you cannot get that at the block level. You can get some information at a block group level. You can always get information at a track level. You can get it for a municipio. Oops, that went forward. I didn't want that to. Um, and then over here on the right, public use microdata area. Um, I think I had something above that. That's not applicable. Um, and believe it or not, over here on the right, upper right, we have metro and micro area. You can get that for um, Puerto Rico, and then over here on the left is the zip code tabulation area. You can get that as well. So um, let's look at this geography thing again, a uh, little, little schematic over here on the right. So this is just a pictorial. We have uh, every block, it's a number. The blocks nest within block groups like this. The block groups nest within a tract and then all the tracks nest within the county. So that would be a municipio in uh, Puerto Rico. 
and then a municipio's nest within the state or the state equivalent, which is Puerto Rico, okay? And that nests within the US. Over here on the left, I sort of put in some code words just so you would know. So county is always equal to municipio and county subdivision, which we have in some parts of the US. Uh, that's also, we just put that in as municipio as well. You don't, so you really don't have to use county subdivision. And then place would be your comunidad or your zona urbana, if you were looking for that. So just some code, I won't say code words, but some translations over here, if you uh, wanted to look for that or, or know about that. So this is, um, I don't know the word in Spanish for threshold, but these are points of change. So where things change. And I'm talking really about, over here on the left, I have ACS as the lettering. So that's American Community Survey, and we also call it Puerto Rico Community Survey. Uh, so sometimes you'll see it written as PRCS. Um, we come every month of every year and we collect data. Uh, we send it out to about 1% of the households a year. Uh, and we try to get that data back from them. If people don't send it back to us, we usually will come knocking on their door. Um, and so, uh, we have an address database that we use, and that's the basis for us to send out uh, this information. Uh, we have had traditionally some difficulty in Puerto Rico. The addressing system is, is different than in the United States, a little bit different, not totally different, but a little bit different. But we're always trying to improve that database, um, the addresses. And so if you work for a town or a municipio, and you are you get something from the US called boundary and annexation survey. Often you can go in there and correct street names and addresses a little bit if if it's allowing you to do that. We urge you to do that. That helps us a lot. So let's think about this. Uh, over here on the right, I put in different population, uh, I'll call it a point of change. Okay, so the middle one, it says 65,000. That's the most important one, okay? So anything in population, we'll say a municipio like maybe San Juan, that's over 65,000 people in population, you can get data, American community or Puerto Rican community survey every year. And you can get that in, I put SEPT, September. So that is released in September. You can get what's called one year data. If you have an area that's lower than 65,000 in population, and that's most areas, okay? So that could be a census tract, or it could be a smaller municipio, or it could be a place, right? Or it could be a zip code tabulation area. You must select the five-year data. That means that we've collected the data over five years, okay? And then after the fifth year, we release the data to the public. Okay, so we can't really collect that data uh, every year, uh, release it every year because it means we'd have to interview too many people in one year in a small area and we don't want to bother too many people. So we instead we do it over five years and then we put out the average after five years every year in December. So you can get the data every year. And you can also get it if, you, if you're living in an area over 65,000. So for example, bigger areas or larger municipios, they can get the one-year data and they can get the five-year data. So they can get both. If, and if we look up higher, up here it says 100,000, we do have some public use microdata areas, we call it Puma. Um, and those are larger areas that have, you have even higher populations and we release some extra data for those areas. So for example, languages, if you wanted to go looking for um, specialized languages in an area, you could do that and you could use the Puma information. And then if we look all the way down to the bottom, we see 4,000. And so 4,000 is the average number of people who live in a census tract around the country. And so um, you can get data, five-year data for census tracts all the way down to 4,000 and even lower than 4,000 people in a census tract. But once it goes below 4,000, we, we have what we call margin of error. 
So if there's statistically, it might not be as strong as it normally would be, and that's a number that we give you, we, the, the number will get higher and higher, meaning it's the data is getting weaker and weaker the, the lower you go below 4,000 people, okay? So we'll, we'll just pay attention to that. So today I'm going to show you a couple different things. And one thing I will do is as we go through the data today, um, as I show you the website a little bit, I will also, um, you know, pull up a QR code on the screen. So that if, so I wanna say, have your iPhone ready. And if you want to take a picture of it or, or grab the QR code, that's a shortcut to get into the website so that you can look at the data or you can create your own um, uh, data, you know, scenario that you want to. So we will look at Explore Census Data. It doesn't really have a name, but lately I call it Explore Census Data. And the URL is simply data.census.gov. Uh, this is where I urge people, if you can see over here where my cursor is, I urge people to use advanced search. You have more control over the data that you are looking for when you use advanced search. If you put something in this window right, um, right here, uh, it is a little bit like Google and it will give you data back, um, but you don't have much control over that. And also in this website, you can get data going back to the year 2000, but not before 2000, okay? But you can get it all the way back. So it isn't just this year or last year, it's, it's going back many years. And then multiple surveys, uh, you can get it for more than just American Community Survey. You can get the data in this portal for decennial um, and that sort of thing. And then also you can map the data in the portal if you wanted to. If I have the time, I'll map it today. But next week, um, I think I, I think in two weeks, I will be giving another presentation uh, on just on how to use data.census.gov. And so I will get, go into this a little bit more at that time, okay? Uh, Yara, was there a question? There is actually a question. So one of them was, again, there were some questions about, you know, how we don't have counties in Puerto Rico, so therefore, uh, we use municipio for both the county and the county subdivision as their equivalent. I think yes. we went over that. Um, and then there's another question uh, specifically to the U.S. Virgin Islands. So I'm not sure if we can answer it right now, but we'll definitely get back to them on that. Let's okay. Okay. All right. Um, Okay, so we will, I'll take a look at this in a few minutes. We'll go into this uh, website and then we will also go here and I'm telling you right now, this is the URL if you wanna take a picture of that. So it's already on your phone, but we'll try to do this together. This works really well on your telephone. It's called a narrative profile. Um, and it is a way for you to go in and select a geography like your municipio, and then you will be given five-year data. So it only gives five-year data. It does not give the one-year data. Um, the data is also collapsible on your screen and it's not copyrighted. Um, and so you can use this if you're doing a report. The, unfortunately, this is only in English. So they, I think we need a toggle switch in this that it can convert it over to Spanish but it is only in English, but if you can deal with this in English, uh, then it could be really handy. It works so well on your phone um, that I'm, I'm really urging you right now just to take a picture of this QR code and we'll try to do a little, you can follow along when we get to the narrative profile. Um, okay, I'm just holding on just for one second longer in case anybody wants to take a, a picture of that. Uh, hold on. Okay, all right, so let me just move ahead. All right, so, you know, I'm, this is the last slide uh, before I go into the website. And so this is just my email and this is a QR code or a, a QR code for a V card over here on the right. If you wanted to take a picture of that, then you have my contact information. Um, but also I'm going to mention that we have uh, this thing called Ask Data. It, hey, you might as well just take a photograph of the whole slide, right? So we have this thing called Ask Data. You can certainly email me, but I could be away on vacation 
uh, maybe I'm I'm not there for a few days. So if you email census.askdata at census.gov, there's usually somebody there who's uh, can help you um, with your question, or you can actually telephone. We don't mind if you telephone. And uh, then the other thing is down here at the bottom, I have subscribe. You can actually go to census.gov uh, stroke academy. And when you get there, we have little data gems. We call their little YouTube videos that help you um, with certain topics. And some of them are actually in Spanish. Uh, and so you could go there as well and look for things. And then you can also sign up for alerts for other uh, presentations and trainings that we are doing. Okay. So I am going to, hopefully you got these um, images, right? And I'll just toggle here. Okay. Sorry. Let me do that again. And I will go over here. Okay. So I'm coming here and I'm just going to show you a couple ways to get to get data or Sam or somebody give me a heads up. Can you see my screen? It says explore census data. Yes, we could see. Yes, David. Yes. Okay, good. All right, just making sure. So uh, once again, what I'm going to do is, like I said, I, I prefer to come here to advanced search. Okay. And so once again, this is our main, our main portal. And when you get here, and when you arrive here, it looks like there's nothing. It looks empty. What do you do? And the thing that you need to do is to come over here on the left and you start working through these, these filters. And so they are all open when you get here. And so you can close them like this. And you see how that looks and they have nice little icons and then you can come down here and you can open them and you can start to filter down. Okay. So I do recommend, um, that you select your year 1st. Okay. So that's the 1st thing I did and notice it put up here into my filter, the year 2021. That's the last, the most recent year that we have 5 year data for American community survey. Okay. And in December, we will have the 2022 data. All right. So now I come to the survey and I will say, I want, now notice we have these other surveys available for this year. So we have population estimates, economic survey and American community survey. And there is no 2020 census data here because I already said I wanted 2021. So the system knows in 2021, there was no decennial census, so it does not appear. If I had put 2020, then I would see the decennial census here. So I'm going to select American Community Survey and I want five-year data. And this is my favorite group of tables right here is just data profile. It is, is like Walmart. It is the Walmart of tables. It is a huge table. And it has all sorts of information in there, but it never really gets into any one topic uh, in, de in depth. Okay, so I select that data profile. So here it is over here in my filters. Okay, and then from there, I will go up to geography. Um, and so what I'm going to do is select municipio. Okay, so we can kind of go two different ways. We could go county subdivision or we could go by county, but I will just call it county. So municipio is actually county equivalent, but, um, and, and by the way, Puerto Rico is not the only um, state or state equivalent with this, uh, this uh, variation. For example, Louisiana does not have counties and Alaska does not have counties either. Um, okay, so we've, let the system know we want county and then we come down here so you have to give it what we call the unit of analysis you say this is what i want to an analyze with by county level or municipio level and so i scroll down here and i look for puerto rico and there it is and so here we have every municipio in puerto rico but i'm going to do this i'm just going to take all of them. I say, I want to see all of them in one table. So now I have three things. I would say three filters are probably as far as you should go, maybe four, but after that, it will, it will lock up the system. It will make it very difficult if you take too many filters. Okay. So then I take my cursor, go to the lower right. I click on search. And now look at this. We have four tables. 
So we have the, o, the DPO2, DPO3, 4, and 5. There is no DPO1. Okay, and DPO2, see it says PR after it means that some of the questions are slightly different or some of the data in there slightly different than it would be with the regular American, um, I'll call it uh, the continent side of um, the DP table, but it's, it's only slightly different. But anyway, let's look at that. We'll click on that table, the DPO2 Puerto Rico. And so the table's loading over here on the right. And I'm going to close these two little arrows here. We call that a chevron. So I will close that. And now we can see the full table. And if we, we can see every municipio that's here as it goes across, it gives us an estimate. It gives us that margin of error. It always will give us that. We, we want to be transparent and just make you, you have to make the decision whether you want to use the data or not. Okay, I'm going to turn off the margin of error button just to consolidate or condense my table a little bit. So we have the estimate, the percentage right here, if you want to look at that. And then as we go to the right, and I can actually manipulate this, we can see all these other municipios over here. So it has all of them here, but notice it is five-year data. If I had not selected five-year data, if I had made that one year data, this table would only have given me the municipios that are larger than 65,000 people. Okay, and it would look like only a partial table. So the way to make sure you get everything is make sure you have five year estimates. Okay, so we have all this data down here. I don't know if you've ever seen it before. It's about households, how people are married, if you have a male householder with children and no, no spouse or female, no spouse. Um, and then you can go down here, the relationship between them, are they unmarried, are they married, uh, and their marital status, and then fertility, meaning how, how, um, how often are they having children, and grandparents, and then we have school enrollment, educational attainment, uh, a little bit more veteran status, disability status down here, residents a year ago. And then I think this is the question, this is where things change from the, the main table at the US, the place of birth, they're asking, are you born in Puerto Rico or the United States? And so this is a little bit different down here. And you can actually see where you have more foreign born, you can get a percentage over here. And then US citizen, uh, and then slow, but year eventually. And then where are people from? in the world, the, the main regions, the languages, and then ancestry down here, which could be interesting to you, okay? So this is what a table looks like. Uh, when you get to this table, let me just move this over a little if I can. Well, you can actually come over here and you can save it to Excel. You can download it to CSV. And then right on the very, very right has three dots. If I click on the three dots, you can create a, a zip file uh, you can share if you want to. If you click on share, it gives you uh, this, um, like a, a URL, and you can copy it, and then you can paste it somewhere if you want to do that, okay, and send it to somebody. But, you know, as I promised, that's why I like to use Chrome. I don't know if you can see my URL. Yeah, Yara, go ahead. Did you have a question? No, I'm good. You're good? Okay. So up here, I'm going to click on the uh, share button in Chrome, and this is a, a QR code. So if you wanted this data set um, or this quick access into our website to get here to look at these tables for the different municipios, you can right now pull out your phone and uh, scan the QR code, or you can take a picture of it if you want to. So I'll just wait a second. Um, and so what this will allow you to do, you can, you can sort of send it over to yourself and work on it on your computer if you wanted to, but it is a shortcut into our data set for this. And when you get there, okay, I'm going to close this. And, all right, over here on the left, it, you can get here and you can move things around. You can say, I don't want this table. I want this other table about housing instead, or maybe I want the economic characteristics. And then you get, 
that information for the different uh, municipios over here. All right. So that is uh, something you can do with this. And that was the counties for uh, Puerto Rico. But let me show you something else. So I do want to show you we had all counties here. I'm changing my geography. Um, and I, I do want to show you that there's there are things here. Of course, we have, you know, places which are the zona urbana and um, uh, I forgot the comunidad. And then we have down here zip codes if you wanted to look at that. And even tracks, all the tracks for the island, we could look at that. But then notice down here it says other geographies. So you could actually click on that. And there's a whole lot of them down here. Many of them do not apply to Puerto Rico, but some of them do. So I did mention this earlier um, about state legislative districts. And I believe you have the upper house right here. So you can get that information. I'm not sure if anybody wants it, but it is there. So I just want to show you a less um, sought after one. So here we have all state legislative districts, the upper chamber for Puerto Rico. So you can grab that information if you wanted to. So here it comes right here. And let's just take a look at that. So I guess that was created in 2018 and maybe they'll you know, maybe they'll reallot it pretty soon at, since the 2020 census and change things around. But here you have the state Senate district one and two and three, and you can actually get these same numbers for them. Okay, so you get it's the same data tables, uh, DPO five or DPO four, three or two, and you can get that information as well if you wanted to. So it looks something like this, the table that I selected, but the and those other tables are there. Uh, as well, if you wanted to, if you if you needed this, I don't know, just as an example. So once again, let me just give you that QR code so that you can take a picture of that if you wanted to. Uh, it's right here. Okay, and it's, as I said, it's a shortcut so that you can get into the system quicker to get to this uh, one tab, okay? Okay, I think everybody probably was able to grab that if they were grabbing it. So let me go back to filters um, and I will get rid of the state uh, legislative. And by the way, next week, I think it is that I have another presentation coming up. It will be a little repetitious of this. So if you, but I'll get into this website a little bit more. So I'm just gonna show you that you can get data for the census tract for Puerto Rico, and this is pretty granular, as we say. So I come down here to Puerto Rico, and you could do it by municipio. So you could select a municipio, and then all the census tracts within that municipio. So we'll just try that. So we have San Juan municipio, and then we have all census tracts within San Juan municipio, okay? And notice our filters, I did not change them. We still have this ACS five year data. And so when I come over here, I could, you know, maybe select um, information. So DPO three, I will select that one. That's economic data. This is five year data. Once again, all the all this information on employment, I think actually down here commuting to work, people who work from home, uh, the industry they work in, and then further on down what the median income household income is. Um, and then median family income is down here as well. Um, and so all this information is here. Um, and then once again, I will do this. I will give you the, the QR code. There it is. If you wanted to get in here, just as an example, as how you would, you know, get in here and look at this sort of table. I'm going to map it now and show you what that will look like um, and show you how to do that. Okay, hopefully you could scan the QR code if you wanted that. Uh, okay, so I think we're actually being recorded and maybe you'll get the recording as well. So over here on the right, there were three buttons and I'm going to click on the word map. And so what will happen, it creates what's called a choropleth map. That means a color, like a color map. So it should um, populate this. So here we have uh, San Juan, a municipio, right? And it's it's actually sort of wherever there's color or darker color, it means it's more of something. Let me 
make the color, there's a color button here and I just make it darker so everybody can see it a little bit easier. So here it is. But what happens when we do this? It selects the first variable or the first number in the table. And so up here on the left, there's a little arrow right here. If you can see that on the upper left where I have my cursor. If I click on that, I can go down here and I can manipulate things around. Okay, so I'm thinking I want, to, you can only map one thing at a time. You can map a number or um, the number of people or the amount of money people make or the percentage. So notice that the default is on the percentage. So I wanna see the medium income. So I will click on number and it changes what's available to me to map. Now, right here, there's a little, if you can see where my cursor is, there's a little bar and I can scroll down if I want to. So I decided I want to look for the median household income, if maybe it's here, I hope so. And here it is, um, me, uh, mean, I don't want, I want median, uh, median right here, okay. Okay, and so it will map it for me. It will show show me where the highest medium uh, income by household is ninety three thousand dollars. Okay, per year, and so it has mapped that for me. And as we go in, we can kind of see what parts of uh, San Juan Municipio have higher incomes than other parts. So I will alert you if there's a university in here and you have students who are living. In, in houses off campus, sometimes they get interviewed and uh, they don't make any money, they're students. And so they, they bring down the average of um, income sometimes. So this is what that would look like if you, if you wanted to uh, go this route and use something like that. And then also we have something here called a base map and you can turn on, you can change the base map and you can see what things look like underneath if you wanted to do that. You could you could kind of scroll in and see it a little bit better. Maybe if you wanted just to analyze it. Um, the color, you can once again come to the color button on the upper right and you can make it more, let me see if I can do that, more transparent if you wanted to, to do that. And you can kind of see what is happening in an area. So, um, all right, I will give you a, Believe it or not, I can do this too. Give you a QR code for this map. Okay, so there it is. If you wanted to, you know, see that map on your phone, or you want to just keep it for the future, maybe you want to use it or change it around. Right, you can go into the map and change things around if you want to do that. Okay, so I am going to switch over to a different tab here and show you something else that you can do. And so this is called, let me close my QR code. Oh, okay. You already answered a question. Okay. So let me just come over here to do, do, do QR code there. Narrative profile. So I've gone to another site. Let me give you the QR code. And and would some somebody just let me know, you can see these QR codes when I put them up there, can't you? Somebody give me yes. Yes, you may you see, see them. them. Okay, okay. And I can yes. click on them as well for my phone. You can click on. Okay. All right. So this is um, a shortcut into um, our website. What's called the narrative profile. So if you have your phone, I'm recommending that you go there right now. Just go to that website, and you can kind of follow along if you would like to. It works so well on your phone. And I think it is actually meant to be used on your phone. Okay. So uh, here we are. We're going to go here. Another way to get there is if you forget this QR code, you can just you know look up ACS narrative profiles and it will bring you to the site. And so we come down here, and so we have been using it does not it does not have every geography, but it has some of the geographies. And so let's just go here to uh, county just to show you how this works. So we come down here, and I will click on Puerto Rico right here. Okay, and then down here, I can choose one of the municipio. Okay, so I'm going to click on one. My grandparents used to live in uh, Mayaguez. So I will click on Mayaguez there, and then I see get narrative profile. So you click on that button, and it takes about 20 seconds. 
to load. And so it starts to load and it will give you five year data. Okay. And so it is making this selection for you. And this is, can be helpful if you're filling up uh, maybe a grant writing or some sort of form where you have to prove something. We always do like you, we would ask you to say something like it came from five year data from, or just from the Census Bureau maybe. But as you go through, it has everything written out for you. So it has households and families. We have that information. And then down here, look at this. If you don't want to use the written part, you can at least use, right, this bar graph. If you wanted to grab the bar graph and maybe over here on the left, that part, you, you might be able to translate a little bit well, a little bit better, and you can put that data in there. And then you have the basic numbers down here. Okay, and then as we go further on down, how many people are foreign born? So of, of the people who were foreign born, so it says only 2.6% are were foreign born, but of those 88% are from Latin America, but there are some from other parts of the world. Okay, so you can go through and you can look at, you know, uh, what's going on, what's happening in um, that municipio, okay, or that we'll call it a county equivalent. Okay, and go through and you have many, many different things here and you can grab that. Maybe you're doing, giving a PowerPoint presentation. Uh, you are welcome to copy and paste this information. It's there for you. Okay, commuting to work, uh, how many people were working from home. But remember, you know, now after the pandemic, more people work from home. This two years of this data was collected before the pandemic. Um, the income of people and how it's broken out, and then it gives you a little bit more. So you go down and you can get all of this information by um, municipio, okay? The other thing I will show you, you can do this as well. You can close all, if you close all button, it's sort of just, it's like reading a book, right? You have the chapters here and you can open each chapter as you want to, or you can close it, whatever you, choose to do industries that people work in, you can open it, you can close it like that, commuting to work, health insurance, everything. Okay, so it's here, but you don't have a lot of control over this. You just get what we give you, okay? So this is something you can do. You can open all right here, or you can close all, all right? And then the last thing you can do with this, let's just change geography. So there's a button right here near the top to the right, and it says change geography. If you, if you do that, it brings you back to square one. Let's say you wanna get information about um, a, a place, or maybe about a census tract, but you don't know your census tract number. You could come over here to use address lookup. I don't know how well this will work for Puerto Rico. Uh, it, it may not work too well, but I will, I don't have an address for Puerto Rico. Um, but I will put a, an address in for where I live. Okay. And you say, look up address, right? You don't even need the zip code and it will give, it should give you, um, your census tract number and you say, view the narrative profile. So the census tract is like your neighborhood, right? And it, takes about 20 seconds and it turns and that information will come up for you and you can do that as well. So um, I'm hoping that some of you will have success looking up the addresses for Puerto Rico. I know some addresses are are not the, the street number, street name method, but the ones that are, they hopefully will work for you. So. Uh, I am, I think I'm at the end of what I was going to present. And so I am going to just sort of open it up for questions. There are a couple of questions, David. So I'll read the first yeah. one for you. So mm -hmm. um, this one says, can we export data sets into our own GIS platform like SRE? If so, where is the right, where is the right format and specific layers? We want to use specific data sets to tell a story through the maps, charts, creating the story in the hub, leading entrepreneurs, innovators, and residents into understanding data and its impacts. 
Is there okay. a way to export stuff? <laughs> yes. Okay. So I'm going to change this URL and I'll show you two different things. Okay. So we're going to go back to data.census.gov. And too bad I didn't take a, a picture of that QR code. Okay, so I come back to advanced search. And when you come here, this is how you will get the data. Okay, so let's just say we're going to take um, counties. Uh, in, in fact, uh, let, me, let me just make sure I have the right year. It, it does help if you select your year before the geography, if you, you know you can do that because the geographies change a little bit every year, so you need to get the right one. Um, okay, county, and I'm going to come here, and we're looking for Puerto Rico. It is Puerto Rico, all counties, so I'm just going to grab all the counties, and look at this. I did not select my year, so I can actually just take a table here, but you need to look at this, view all three products, make sure you get the five-year data, so I'm just grabbing it here. That way you make sure you get every county of data. Okay, and here it is. So here we have that information. Margin of error, I turn that off. Here is everything, right, for that one thing. So if you want to export this, right, you come over here to the right, you must use Chrome. Okay, first thing is you must use Chrome. All right, and then over here we have three dots on the right. And you are going to export this through zip for this data. Okay, so if you must use the zip file, if you use a zip file, when you use the file, then you will get your geo codes. Okay, so you, you need to do that in order to get your geo codes. If you try to do it with CSV or Excel, you will not get it. Okay, and when you export that for Esri, an Esri product, or maybe even QGIS, uh, you will get the geo codes, but when you get it in, in mixed in with the data, you know, I would think that the geo codes would be at the beginning, but sometimes they are at the end and sometimes they are in the middle of the data set. So uh, pay attention to that, but it, it should be there. The other thing is, um, I didn't show this before, but I, I'm going up here and I'm going to um, www.census.gov. Oops, census.gov. And we'll just go there. Oops, it took, let me just go here. Census.gov, right? And we have topics right here. So I'm at the main census website. It's just census.gov, G-O-V. I go to topics and I go to here to geography. So census.gov, topics, geography, just in case you didn't know when you get here. You can come down, scroll down, and you can get your tiger line shape files here. And uh, I actually really recommend cartographic boundary files. Um, if you kind of have an idea what your scale for your map would be, you could grab these. These are lower memory files, and they're created for you to use our data to load the data into. Okay. If if you're doing a map that's larger or smaller than this, it doesn't it doesn't matter too much. You can still take those boundary files. So that's uh, you know one thing you could do, cartographic boundary. And then some people here they are down here. Sorry, let me just let me go back one so I can show you. Yeah, okay. So cartographic boundary files are here. One one more. I want to show you the other the other files that we have here. So. Some people like uh, um, I lost it. oh the geo databases here it is I'm sorry some people prefer to get this because it already has data uh, attached to it for the the mapping you're going to do it's just that it takes longer for them to put this data in here it might take another five or six months before the geo database is actually created. So if you want your data earlier, um, and, and you get no choice of what the data will be in here, it might not be all the data, it will be some of the data. So uh, that's the downside of the geo database. But so you have those three options from us. Okay, so I hope that answers that question. There are a couple more questions on the Q&A, David, and I don't know if you could address this or not, but. Um, the next one is, does the 
urbanization field is available to run a query. I, I think the what field? Urbanization. So I feel like that's just part of like the place, right? Or or we could just do county and and sub county division, I think. That's only available in DCG, right? Uh okay, wait a minute. Um Yara, can you I yeah, can you put that in either in the chat or yeah, in the chat so I see how you said that? I, I, I... Oh or <laughs> Or organization, it's like a it's like a um, structure of Puerto Rico addresses. So I don't think it's um, I don't think it's uh, part of the data census.gov. Okay, how do I spell it? R B A N I Z is in zebra A C I O N. Oh, I don't know that. Yeah, I've never heard of that. Mm, yeah, I, I, that might be something we don't address. Yeah, we don't, we don't have everything. I mean, we do have that on in the United States too. People will ask us for certain states. Do you have this or do you have that? And we often don't have it. But um, Yara, maybe you can get that person's name. Yeah, or yeah, and also I do like have that. someone that might be able to help us out with that too. Lorena, um, she is okay. an attendee. Can you unmute Lorena, uh -huh. Sam? Thank you. Uh, a great training thus far. This is Lorena Molina Irizarry. I'm the Senior Advisor for Puerto Rico at the Census Bureau and the Director's Office. And uh, we have been working very, very closely with Census Geo and many other stakeholders in Puerto Rico about this particular um, issue of, of Puerto Rican addresses. So the urbanization or urbanization field, mm -hmm. it's a field that is a bystander of USPS and all other uh, federal standards that for Puerto Rico, we have a, a, an additional line in our address structure. Um, I don't know if we have somebody from GEO um, that can join in and kind of explain a little bit more, but we do have for Puerto Rico addresses, the urbanization field in our master, ad master address file. This is actually a huge topic right now and a, and a big policy issue for Puerto Rico and we're working on the census side and this is just for everybody on the line to, to be aware um, that we're working across the, the federal um, uh, government and the local government of Puerto Rico and many of our uh, partners and organizations from um, nonprofits to industry to academia um, in, in ensuring that there's uh, that Puerto Rico adheres to the federal standard when using Puerto Rico addresses. Um, the United States Postal Service, uh, USPS, actually uh, publishes the standard for addresses in Puerto Rico. Um, perhaps ERI can send it to you and you can post it so people are aware. It's called Publication 42. Um, and what we're trying to uh, accomplish here as, as part of the, the efforts of the Census Geography component of the Census Bureau is um, to work with the governor of Puerto Rico and the municipalities to ensure that, they're, that the standard is implemented not only at the local level, but that so it has integration with the federal systems across the board. And that includes many, many agencies where this particular issue of the urbanization field is, is a challenge. Um, and we, we currently run we launched earlier in the summer uh, a, a working group. It's called Puerto Rico Geospatial Data Group. Um, it's um, a government-wide, but also it includes a multi-sector uh, set of stakeholders. We meet every month to talk about some of the geospatial and specifically addressing challenges of Puerto Rico uh, and, and, of course, uniqueness and nuances of the Puerto Rico addresses. So if anybody is on the line is interested, um, and joining those those conversations and being part of that stakeholder network group, we meet again every month. Um, and in 2018, actually, we we launched originally what was called the Puerto Rico Address Data Working Group. And one of the uh, uh, outputs of that was a three phase report with recommendations across the federal government and with the government of Puerto Rico in partnership with the government of Puerto Rico to address this particular uh, big question that always comes up around uh, urbanization field and, and this really the standard for Puerto Rico addresses. So I will drop, uh, I, I would ask Yara to drop my email on the chat and if you want to join those conversations and if there's any geospatial or, you know, uh, experts on the line from Puerto Rico, we would love uh, for you to participate in that, uh, in that working group. Thank you. Okay, so this is David. I do see that Juan wrote in the chat that in last week's seminar, US, US rep, census rep said the urbanizations will be available in early 2024. Does that sound correct, Lorena? 
Well, okay. I, I just want to say one thing that what happens is the geographies are usually um, made available at the beginning of the year, but it takes the rest of the year for the data to be released. Okay, so in our system, the system I showed you, data.census.gov, behind the scenes, the geographies are put in there at the beginning of the year, but it won't be until probably about the middle of the year that population estimates and um, American Community Survey and, and even other things that apply to that, that they get released. So you may want think to go looking in our system at the beginning of the year for data for the urbanization areas, but it probably will take throughout the whole year for data to be released. So just please be aware of that. And I think Lorena was trying to speak, but she couldn't be. Okay. I'll, okay. And I'll put in her email on the chat for everybody. Okay, well, I I have another presentation I'm going to do next week. I think it's next week or the week after. I think the week after next week uh, on a Monday, Monday morning, if anybody wants to attend that, it will be a little bit more of the same, but I'll go into American Community Survey a little bit that more and actually show um, data.sense.gov a little bit more in depth than I did today, uh, if anybody wants to see that. Um, but it, it will be me. And so you, you already know me and, you know, you can ask me questions and I don't, there's no issues with that. So I did give you my QR code before. And so, you know, you know, you have my contact information and you also have the ask data information. If you want to contact me, I won't have all the answers, but sometimes I can get you to the person who has the answers. So, uh, okay, Sam. Sam, I will turn it back over to you if there are no other questions. Yara, are there any other uh, open uh, questions that need to be uh, answered in the q and I don't see any new ones. The only other thing that I do want to mention is that we did post in the chat the website for the Puerto Rico series. So there is another 10 to 11 trains are coming up, are posted there, and there are you know, various topics. and. Some of them are a little bit more um, for intermediate and, and advanced users. So if you're interested in any topics, I will just, you know, suggest that you'll go into the website and register for all of the upcoming sessions. All right, that's it. Thank you, Sam. Thank you again, David. Thank you, Yara, and for Lorena's assistance as well. Uh, this concludes today's presentation. You may disconnect at this time. Thank you.